Hi, this is Jerry Ball, and you're listening to The Grueling Truth. Welcome, everybody, to Week 5 of The Grueling Truth NFL Weekly Pick'em Show, brought to you by Grid RMO, a new interactive football game, where you get to pick what the other team is going to call offensively or defense and compare it to everybody else. So check out Grid RMO at www.gridironmo.com. I want to welcome in my co-host. We'll start off with the biggest loser of the week, Matt Andrews <laughs> Cabbage, always, who was seven I, and eight. I always know when when I get when I'll go first. It's the weeks that I lose. I, I will always be introduced first. But that's we all always right. introduce the first loser or the worst loser <laughs> first. Uh, that's, that's true. I guess you are consistent. So I guess yeah. I got to go first today. All right, now we'll, I mean, these guys tied for the bronze medal. We got first from the Denver Broncos, Mark Cooper. Go Broncos, baby. Uh, you were a Buccaneer, too, so I don't want to hear that crap this week. And, of course, <laughs> tying him for third place, Brian Schmidt. They were both 8-7. and seven. How you doing tonight, Schmidt? You know, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm uh, looking to do a little better this week. All right, and then second place, Aaron Zetnick. Probably the highlight of his life, going nine and six. How you doing tonight, Aaron? <laughs> the highlight of my life. Here. <laughs> well, right after your kids being born. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know if that was a highlight or not yet. Um, <laughs> sure, when they're sure teenagers, it's not. When they sure can't walk or talk yet, it's a highlight. Sure seems like it was a highlight of my bank account draining. <laughs> That's true, too. All right. And, of course, I was the winner. That's why I'll go last. But I've already introduced myself. So I was 10-5, and five, which gives me a two-game lead over Brian and a four-game lead over Aaron and a three-game lead over Matt. Matt, you're only down by three. I gave hey, you a, a little bit of a positive note for the day. So There you go. Not the and highlight of my life. <laughs> it's a 49 the highlight day. of the day. It, it's not it's just a highlight. It's, you had a pretty crappy day. Yeah. Eh. That is Hopefully true. it'll get better. Just not next Tuesday when we do this show again, and I've won yet again. I may not lose again this year, so just so you guys know. Um, all right, let's go with everybody's big takeaway from this last week, week four of the NFL season. Coop, what was your big takeaway? Well, being as I was, you know, so zoned in on the Coop Bowl, I didn't pay much attention to anything else. <laughs> I thought they called it the Cooper Bowl. Do, do they have a trophy any, with like a guy oh, fishing? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a fly rod. You get a fly rod when. You, yeah, you know, you know, so you, when you got Jamison back there in FSU, Crabinol, um, you know, you're always pulling for the Broncos. So that was a good win for the Broncos. Uh, Simeon goes up her shoulder. They aren't talking much about it here in town, which is kind of interesting. Um, saying he's going to play, but you know how you know how shoulder third degree separation. So it sounded like it's not. But Paxton came in, and uh, I thought he played great. So I, I was pretty focused on that game. But I'll tell you what, tell you, the monster in the house, I think, is the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. I mean, defensively, they're really good. And with Sam Bradford, yeah. I mean, basically it's one of these things where he just needs to go in and not screw things up. But Sam Bradford is a good NFL quarterback. His problem is just getting hurt. And, I mean, if they can keep him upright and healthy – they may have a better team than what they would have had with Bridgewater. Yep. But, all right, Brian, I know this is probably going to have something to do with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Other than the fact that was a great game to watch. No, not really. But uh, I was, uh, you know, taking a whip from Atlanta. Uh, you know, I knew it was going to be a toss-up game. But, you know, 48 points, uh, Atlanta can put some points on the board. Uh, you know, I also I like I like Oakland's win on the road in Baltimore. I thought that was a great win. Uh, yeah, I just it was a, it was a, a lot of good games. Uh, New Orleans and San Diego was a great game. Uh, a lot of good games, but I'm also you know really impressed with Minnesota. Uh, just what they do defensively, and uh, you know they they've got Bradford doing a great you know a great job. Uh, they're, they're not putting in a game and. Uh, in his hands to, to, to win, or to let him manage the game and let their defense win, and uh, you know, I think I think you know, old them maybe maybe be becoming one of the best coaches in the NFL. All right, now um, Matt, you know, we do a CFL weekly pick'em show with Dieter Brock, former CFL Hall of Fame quarterback, and Oz Davis. Now, 
Brian right there just said more on this show than Oz let him say during the entire CFL Pick'em show. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> that's, the most, that's the most Brian's ever talked at one time. Um, Matt. Oh, like everybody else, uh, Minnesota is super impressive. Uh, the fact that they're doing this without Bridgewater, without Adrian Peterson, and it doesn't look like they're going to slow down. If they stay healthy the rest of the way, they just found a way to work Corderell Patterson into the offense, which hasn't been done since he's been there. Uh, they just look like they're going to get better and better, and uh, they're going to be a force to reckon with. I thought Seattle uh, had a pretty impressive win in New York. Uh, also uh, agree with uh, you guys about the, the two really good games of the day. The Saints-Chargers was a really good game, and also the Raiders-Ravens. Uh, but uh, there's a number of 3-1 and one teams that are pretty impressive, and uh, um, it'll be interesting to see how the Eagles play this week, if they can remain undefeated. All right, now, I, the only game I saw all weekend was the Bengals and the Dolphins, and what I took away from that is the Dolphins are really terrible. But I, I saw nothing on Sunday. I, I get up Sunday morning, I watch the first half of the Indianapolis-Jacksonville game, and then my internet goes out with my Wi-Fi and my home phone, and I had nothing till four o'clock yesterday, and that sucked. So my takeaway from that is Comcast sucks. All right, first game, <laughs> Arizona at San Francisco. So of course we have to have our resident Homer, Matt Andrew Scavage, <laughs> pick this game first. Well, uh, going into tonight, I have uh, picked them twice out of four games. I will be picking the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, the 49ers defense took a massive hit without uh, with losing Navarro Bowman for the year. And DeForest Buckner went down with a foot injury. He probably won't play this week. Uh, defensively, they're, gonna, they're just going to be in dire straits. It's going to be really hard for the front seven to recover from that. Uh, offensively, they're just, they, they, got, they need a defense to keep the score close. So I, I, re, I look for Arizona with or without Carson Palmer to win this game. Yeah, I think San Francisco without Bowman and them, they're going to be about as entertaining to watch as watching Tim Kaine talk about anything. Mark Cooper, what do you got, Arizona or San Francisco? Well, yeah, I'm sticking with Arizona, even though the Rams beat them up. And the Rams have been playing better than I kind of thought they would all year so far. So, um, yeah, but, you know, San Francisco just – I. They just—they're just, not on my radar at all from the standpoint of—I I, just—I I despise Kaepernick, and I don't take care for the team in general. And uh, the Cardinals got to come back and, and get a win. Do you just not care for the team because of Matt? No, I like Matt. <laughs> Matt's my buddy. Oh, okay. All right, um, Brian. Yeah, I've got to go with the Cardinals. Uh, I just think the. Uh, you know, that, that last week I was tough loss. I think they'll rebound. Uh, I, I think 49ers, you know, going to struggle a little bit with with the injuries. And I, I'm just – I'm still, you know, the 49ers have played well, but I'm, I'm still just not sold on them. I, I think, you know, I just feel like they'll fade eventually. I think the 49ers faded after that first game. They may not win another game with those injuries too, and that's not a shot at Matt's team. It's just – with Blaine Gabbert at quarterback, it's not like they can outscore anybody. Without Bowman, they're in trouble. So I'm with you guys. I'm going with Arizona. Aaron? I'm also going with Arizona. Clean sweep. Uh, there's just too many weapons to keep down for too long in Arizona. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, I think they bounce back and have a pretty big game offensively. All right, next game which looks to be a lot more competitive. Houston Texans at the Minnesota Vikings. As you guys said, the Vikings look phenomenal so far. Defensively, they're good. The, the thing that gets me about them is with Asiata, I mean, they've, they've got three running backs that are really good. So even when Peterson goes out, they got McKinnon, they got Asiata. I mean, so they really – those guys aren't as good as Peterson, but they're good enough to win with. I'm going with the Vikings in this game. Um, Brian? I – 100% agree with you. Um, I'm going with the Vikings. I, I'm, I like what I see. Um, I, I just I just think they do a great job defensively, and I think they do a great job of managing the game, letting their running game do do the work, and, and letting their defense make plays and put them in the best position. And, and, and I think they're going to win this game. All right, Aaron? I have to agree as much as I hate to. I think the Minnesota Vikings may be the Carolina Panthers of this year. Well, I'll disagree because I think they're a lot better team 
than Carolina was. I'm like saying Carolina, like I, I could see them going 14 and 2 or 15 and 1. Oh, okay. But we can go like that. Uh, Coop. You know, Houston barely got by Tennessee last week, and the Vikings are playing so well right now, I don't know how you can pick against them. All right, Matt, can you pick against them? <clears throat> Absolutely not. The Vikings in their building are going to be really hard to beat. I'm not sure Houston scores 10 points. All right, guys, we're going to have to disagree on a game at some point, but if not, we'll just <laughs> all in the first way tie, we'll all win. All right, I don't think we're probably going to do it. I don't know. This is an ugly game. We'll start off, since it's an ugly game, we'll start off with Aaron. It's a little ugly because he sent me a message today said he was prettier to me, and that's stupid. Chicago at Indianapolis. Aaron? <laughs> I never said prettier. I said I'm much better looking than you are. I thought you said more feminine looking, but okay. No. I'm going with the Colts at home. I think they bounce back. I'm not convinced that the Bears are going to be a consistent enough team to put up enough points. Brian Hoyer is probably better for that offense than Jay Cutler at this point. Uh, In fact, there's rumors of Cutler being traded to Miami. Um, I just think that in their building, the Colts will play a lot better. I think Chicago just played an inspired ball at home against a division opponent. I don't think they can duplicate it two weeks in a row. I'm going Colts. All right, Coop. <clears throat> Colts, you know me. I don't like Cutler. I don't like Chicago. I don't like anything about them. They're the uh, Broncos of the West or Central. Or, 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 you know, here's here's a dilemma I have. I've always had <clears throat> you guys over on your side of the United States. You know, you're on the east side of Mississippi, and you call yourself Midwesterns. How do you do that? I don't understand it either. I don't either. Yeah. Bunch of weirdos over there. Okay, anyway, Colts. Yeah, we're the weirdos. You're the ones all the liberals over there, California and everything, all the Hillary Clinton people. If you're east of Mississippi, you're east. You're not Midwest, anything. Yeah, well, people from the Midwest are stupid. What's your point? You're taking Indy, right? All right, hey, I'm just glad we're all, we're all in consensus on that one. I'm glad you're over there, too. All right, uh, Matt. <laughs> you can yeah, eat I, the I, fish, though, right? That's way west. Right. Matt? Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, uh, with what Aaron said, I, I don't think the Colts um, are going to play badly in their building against the Bears. I think the Bears just had a good home game against a division opponent. Uh, I, I, I don't think the Colts are very good. I think they got a lot of problems that they have, the same as they had last year, but I think they'll play well enough to win this game. All right, Brian? Yeah, I've got to go with the Colts as well. I, I I just can never get into the Bears uh, winning a football game, so I'm going to go with the Colts. Yeah, the Bears don't get into it too much either. So <laughs> I'm going to go with the Colts, that being said. I think Andrew Luck will do enough. He'll score enough points to beat them. Um, next game, Brian, Jets at the Steelers. You really got to ask me on that one? Uh Steelers. Well, uh, since y'all got beat 34-3 to by the Eagles two weeks ago and you started out that pick the same way, yes, I have to ask. Okay, well, yeah, you know, getting Bell back, uh, I, I like what they did defensively. Uh, first three weeks they they went from Blitzburg to Zoneburg and, uh, against the Chiefs and mixed it up a little bit, got some turnovers, and, and offensively got back on track. And, and you know, having Bell back is, is huge. Uh, it just you know adds another weapon, and uh, so I, I see them uh, winning this game. Yeah, I, I think the Jets are a solid team, but I'm going to go with Pittsburgh also. I just don't see the Jets being able to score enough points to keep up with Big Ben. Coop. Yeah, I'm going with Big Ben, and you know what's so funny though? <clears throat> Rex Ryan cannot catch cannot catch a break. He beats the Patriots, and all they talk about is him beating a team that had the third-string quarterback in. I mean, they're just killing the poor guy. <laughs> I feel bad for him, but the Steelers are going to stomp him. All right. Um, Aaron? I'm going with the Steelers at home. I think uh, the Jets being banged up. I know uh, Eric Decker's hurt. I think Brandon Marshall's a little bit banged up. Again, I, I agree. Uh, I don't think the Jets can score enough points. Uh, Big Ben at home is pretty good. So I'll go Steelers. All right, Matt. Yeah, the Steelers at home. I mean, this was in New York. I think this is more intriguing of a game. But with Le'Veon Bell back, guy runs for almost 150 yards his first game back. DeAngelo Williams isn't just going to, you know, do nothing. He'd still be a part of the offense. And now the emergence of Sammy Coates, 
they really spread the ball around well. I don't see how the Jets um, are going to be able to keep up with, with what they got going offensively. And I think Pittsburgh's defense is underrated. All right, we'll go to Aaron. We'll give you the game of the week, the Tennessee Titans at the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> you know, this is kind of like the Detroit-Chicago game last week where somebody will figure out a way to lose it. Um, I'm not confident in either team. <laughs> this is a toss-up to me. I think Tennessee with the ground game with DeMarco Murray will uh, play ball possession a little more. Mariota, I think, can make a little bit more plays. And Miami's defense isn't very good. I'm going with the Titans on the road. All right, Brian? Yeah, this is another one of those toss-ups for me. But, I, you know, my Miami at times has not, you know, played bad. I mean, granted, depending on who they played, it's not played bad. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm I, going to go with Miami at home, but, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if, I, if I'm wrong on this one. But I, I'm going to go with Miami on this. All right, I'm going to go with Aaron. I'm going to go with Tennessee just because it seems to me Tennessee is in every game. It seems like they play hard, which, I mean, Miami against Cincinnati was a joke. I mean, it looked like other than the one deep pass, they did nothing. Um, I'm going to go with Tennessee. Coop? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Uh, Miami just seems to find a way to lose. Um, and Tennessee, I think, I mean, they, you know, you, you, they're only seven points behind Houston, and not that Houston's on fire, but I think Houston's better than Miami. So I think uh, Tennessee can. I think that's that's my logic. I think Tennessee will beat Miami. All right, Matt. Yeah, no doubt. I think uh, Tennessee is just. Uh, they got. I think they're just. They're they're more scrappy. They they just seem to. They do more things that I think they got more around them that that can that can beat you. Demarco Murray's a huge factor in that. He's very dependable. Derrick Henry's uh, good to watch, and uh, they got a decent offense, and I think they got an opportunistic defense in this kind of game. I just don't like Miami at, at all right now. I don't. There's just not much to like there. All right, next game: Philadelphia at Detroit. Coop. <laughs> Philadelphia. I don't think Detroit. I think would Stafford throw like four or five picks last week? I can't remember. Um, well, he'd have but, to, to lose to Chicago. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean Philadelphia's just Philadelphia's just too too good a football team right now, um, up, all the way across the board. So I'm I'm sticking with Philly. All right, Matt. I think Detroit gives them a game, but I'll go Philly. Yeah, I, I think Detroit will give them a game. Detroit has been in a game every time, but I don't think they got enough to beat Philadelphia. I'm going with the Eagles, Aaron. Uh, coming off the bye, I think they'll be uh, better prepared. I think the Eagles beat them. Uh, I think you're right. I think the Lions will be in the game, but they'll find a way to lose, kind of like Coop said about Miami. They find a way to lose as well. And um, the Eagles, 3-0, and you know, I know they're on the road, which will be kind of the first big test, I guess, but not really because it's the Lions. But um, Lions linebacking core is really banged up too. So Eagles, Eagles uh, by a touchdown or two. All right, Brian. I've got to go with the Eagles as well. I just uh, I think they're going to come out of this, and they're going to be a better team uh, coming off the bye week than they were when they left. When they went into the bye week, uh, I think they're going to be even better. So uh, I'm going to go with the Eagles. All right, next game, New England at Cleveland. I'm going to go with the Patriots. <laughs> I don't have to explain why. Brian? Patriots. <laughs> Coop? <laughs> I don't think anybody has to explain why Patriots. Matt? Patriots. Aaron? Yeah, Patriots. <laughs> All right. Um, next game, Washington at Baltimore. This is a better game, Brian. Washington at Baltimore. I am, I'm I'm going to go with Baltimore on this. Uh, I think they're going to come back, uh, get back on the, on the winning ways. And I'm just I'm just not sold on, on Washington. Um uh, so, uh, Baltimore for me on this one. All right, Coop. Yeah, I'm going with Baltimore too. <clears throat> I mean, Oakland beat them last week, and I, I don't think they. Uh, I think they bounced back um, big time this week. All right, Aaron. I agree. I think the Ravens at home. Although I do think that the Redskins could win that game. I think it'll be a close game. Um, both these teams, I think, I look at them as inconsistent. 
I, I don't All right, so this is one of those games like Thursday you might put a Facebook post up changing your pick? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, Matt. Yeah, I like the Ravens at home. Uh, I, I, I think the Redskins have serious problems on defense right now. Uh, but offensively, they think they could, be, they could give the Ravens some trouble. But Ravens are well coached. Uh, I, think they, I think they have a better quarterback. Uh, and uh, Steve Smith Sr., is, uh, he's still a good receiver. So uh, I, I like the Redskins or the Ravens all around here to, to, to win at home. All right, so now we got what I think is the game of the week, Atlanta at Denver. Coop? Well, you know, I'm a homer, so I'm sticking with my boys because of that defense. And uh, Julio is scary. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, watching the Falcons, the, this could be an upset game. Um, if Simeon isn't in, but Paxton played so well, I got enough confidence in him and everything I've seen of him in the preseason. Um, you know, as long as we don't turn the ball over, I think we win that game. All right. Um, Matt. <clears throat> Yeah, Coop pretty much said what I wanted to say. If the uh, if, if the Broncos quarterback situation, whoever's out there, doesn't turn the ball over, I think the Broncos will win this game. If this was in Atlanta, I think Atlanta would have a much better chance for an upset. But Denver at home with that defense, I just I don't see Matt Ryan and Julio Jones uh, lighting it up, and I think they can shut slow down the run. So I like Denver in a uh, not a blowout, but a, but a victory. All right, Aaron. Yeah, Denver at home, I don't think you can pick against that defense right now. Uh, even though I think Atlanta is probably uh, one of the more dominant offenses right now, putting up some points the last couple weeks, but I like uh, Denver at home. Brian? I'm I'm, uh, I'm going to go with the upset on this one. I'm going to go with Atlanta. Um, I, again, I... I I think, you know, it, it, it can, uh, you know, Denver's defense being as good as it is, but, um, you know, just watching Atlanta last night, it just seems it's just an offense that, you know, I think's got some, some weapons, and I, and I think can give Denver some problems. Uh, you know, so I'm going to go with the upset. All right. I'm going to agree with Brian. I'm going to go with Atlanta. I think they've got too much firepower. Um, Simeon has done a good job this year. I really like Paxton Lynch. I think in the long run, Paxton Lynch will be the starting quarterback there. But right now, I like Atlanta, no matter what Coop thinks. It's a homer pick because I've driven through Atlanta like three times and I've never driven through Denver. So I'm going to go with Atlanta. Um, that brings us to Cincinnati at Dallas. Aaron. Oh, this one. This one's a toss-up for me, honestly. I think uh, the Cowboys' running game is really impressive, but Des Bryant's health being what it is, I'm going with Cincinnati on the road. Uh, you've uh, talked about Dunlap and you know the the defensive line from Cincinnati. I think they can actually stop the run, and I think uh, I think they can pull out the win on the road. Yeah, I'm going with the Bengals also. And, I mean, I think the big thing there is you've got, and this isn't a homer pick because last year a couple times I did pick against the Bengals. Matt can vouch for that, Coop. But I think when you look at this, you got Geno Atkins, you got Carlos Dunlap. But the big thing is this. The Niners slowed down Ezekiel Elliott big time when Bowman was in the game. When he went out, that's when they ran all over him. Burfick's back right. with the Bengals in the middle. I think Burfick slows the run game down. The Bengals' offense still scares me because it doesn't seem like they're clicking yet. But I'm, I just think the Bengals have a more talented roster than Dallas. But I think this Cowboy team in another year or two is going to be really good. Brian? I'm, uh, I'm going to go with the Cowboys, uh, although I, I agree it's going to be a great game. But I'm going to go with the Cowboys. Uh, I, I think at home, and, and, and I think that, you know, the – the Cowboys will do enough offensively to, to, to win this, but uh, this was a toss-up game for me. Now, remember this. The Cowboys have also – my other thing is this. The Cowboys have won basically two home games in over a year. Yeah, I'll so, still Cowboys. I know you will just because you're a Steeler fan and you're a hater on the Bengals. Coop! Actually, you, you, you know I'm not because you know how many times I've picked the Bengals. So. Oh, whatever. It makes for better radio if we're arguing. Coop, what do you think? Well, I should pick. I should pick against you since you picked against me. I didn't but, pick against you because it was against you. Well, I just think Atlanta's offense is going to score well, too many points for them. 
Yeah, but I'm way smarter than you, so I'm going to go and stick with the Bengals. And I, I say wow, I'll tell you home. what. If your big takeaway from this show is that you're smarter than me, everybody's takeaway could be that. Go ahead. It is. I know. That's everybody's. sad because I'm not very smart. Even though I won last week while your sorry ass went 7-7. Seven and seven. <laughs> <laughs> That was a rough week. Games kept falling. I kept going, oh, God. So you were four games behind me last week, but I'm the idiot here. Go ahead. Keep talking. It helps my case. <laughs> wow. So are you picking Cincinnati or Dallas? <laughs> Cincinnati, I told you a minute ago. I was smarter than oh, you. The team is going to win. I'm not betting against right, you like Matt, you did me. Matt Anderskevich. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with uh, your points, Mike. I think uh, – uh, you watch, I watched Dallas pretty. I watched Dallas quite a lot this year. I think, like you said, in a year or two, this is going to be a really good team. Um, they're intriguing. I think they can do enough to win uh, a decent amount of games, but they've got issues on defense. And I think the Bengals' defense can slow that offense down. And uh, I think uh, Andy Dalton to AJ Green is uh, just really formidable. Um, they got enough on the ground game. But I think the Bengals will win this game. All right, next game, Coop, San Diego at Oakland. Oh. I knew that because you don't they're like They're playing too good. They're Rivers. just playing too good. Don't like Rivers. He's a crab baby. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> they just Brian, what? Raiders are loaded. They're going to have a good division this year. All right, so I mean, Ursa, the owner for the Colts, he's always loaded, but it doesn't help their team. Brian. Uh, again, another another toss up game for me. But I, I think the Raiders, uh, Raiders at home. I think the Raiders will do enough offensive and defense. I think it's going to be a close game. It's going to be like one of those thirty twenty seven games. So uh, I'm going to go with the Raiders. All right, Aaron. I'm going with the Raiders in the black hole. San Diego blew two huge leads this year, and uh, I don't think they'll have the lead in this game. I, I think Oakland wins thirty four twenty four or something like that. All right, Matt. Yeah, I think uh, the Raiders will win, too. Uh, Philip Rivers is just kind of stuck in a lousy situation. He's just he's a really, really good quarterback, but I just don't know that the Chargers are good enough to – they keep blowing leads. I just don't know that they can win a game like this. Not, I'm just not real confident in them. So I'm going I'm to go with the Raiders at home. Yeah, can I interrupt for a second? <clears throat> yeah, Matt, sure. What Matt said was interesting because they had – I saw a special the other night with LT, and uh, he was talking about how – the Chargers are really rebuilding and they need to get rid. He, he thought they need to get rid of Rivers before he's too far down the road <clears throat> and get something for him or they won't get anything sure. for him while they are rebuilding. That was kind of an interesting comment from, you know, a, you know, from <laughs> Damian Thomas. Yeah, and Miami would probably give up an entire draft just to get a quarterback. Yeah. But yeah we I know mean, Rivers still work. has a few good years left on him and – I think he's one of the most un- un- unappreciated quarterbacks of the last 10 to 12 years. Uh, just from kind of like Warren Moon was, you know, it just I think he's a really, really consistent quarterback who's just been on not a lot of good teams. Well, he chose that fate for himself with the fit he threw at the draft. Oh wait, that yeah, was but Eli at least Manning. it's warm in San Diego. <laughs> I said, oh wait, that was Eli Manning. And the, uh, I'm not going to play for San Diego. <laughs> well, I'd rather go to San Diego than New York. No offense to New York, but San Diego seems a lot warmer. All right, next game, the surprising Los Angeles Rams host the Buffalo Bills. Matt? Uh, the way the Rams are playing right now, it's it's kind of a toss-up game, but um, I think I'm going to take the Bills on this game. I, I don't think the, the Rams are – Really, a three and one team. I, I expect them to kind of come back to earth a little bit. Uh, I, I I like Tyrod Taylor. Rashawn McCoy is a good back. Uh, they've had some injuries there, but um, I think the Bills can win this game. All right, Brian. I am. Uh, I want to go with the Bills, but I'm going to go with the Rams. Uh, just I, you know, I don't, I don't really have a reason why, other than the fact that I just have a feeling that uh, they're going to win this game and uh, continue to surprise people. 
Yeah, I'm going to go with the Rams, too, to be playing in front of a home crowd, 95,000 pumped up. I think the Rams win the game, Coop. I agree. Uh, they beat Arizona <clears throat> last week, and, and I've kind of been kind of heavy picking on Arizona this year. And, and uh, the Rams just seem to have surprised a number of us. So I'm sticking with the Rams. All right. Um, let's see. Aaron. Well, I don't know if people forgot, but the Bills just beat the Rams. Our Bills just beat Arizona two weeks ago, 40-7. to seven. I'm going with Buffalo coming off an emotional, huge win against New England, third quarterback or not. Uh, Rex Ryan's got his guys playing better. They won two in a row over tough opponents. I don't think the Rams are as, as tough. Yeah, they beat Seattle, and uh, now they beat Arizona. Two big division wins for them. Yeah, they beat Arizona in Arizona, too. Yeah, I just don't see them putting, you know, four in a row together. I just don't. And I think the Bills are actually pretty tough. Their defense is pretty good. I think I think the Bills, you know, coming off that shutout against New England, I don't think the Rams offense scares the Bills. I think well, I don't think the Rams point. offense scares anybody. But they haven't scared anybody, but they've won three out of four games. I think the game's a toss-up. I think Buffalo's the better team. I'm just going with the Rams because they're on a roll. They're at home. It's going to be pumped up. And, I mean, Coop, you played in Denver. You know what a crowd can do like that even when you're playing a better team. Yep. Um, All right. The New York Giants at the Green Bay Packers. We have a Packer fan here, so we'll let him pick first. That would be Matt Andrews Cabbage. I'm kidding. Aaron (laughs) Zepnick. Aaron Zepnick, the Giants at the Packers. I think the Packers will get back on track at home. Um, they're going to get healthier with their coming off the bye week. I think the uh, the Giants are emotional roller coaster right now. Odell Beckham, big distraction on the sideline, letting uh, letting his emotions get the best of him uh, against Minnesota the other night. Uh, I think the Packers will uh, continue their winning ways at home here. Coop. Uh, give the Packers a week, an extra week to prepare for the Giants and like the back. All right, your Coop, your phone's breaking up. I believe Coop Uh-oh. picked Green Bay, though. Correct? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Packers. All right, you there yet, Coop? If you got me, I got the Packers. All right, we got you, Brian. Uh, I'm going to go with the Packers. Uh, you know, again, I, I want to pick the Giants, but uh, I'm, I'm going to go with the Packers at home. Why do you want to pick the Giants? You just don't like the Packers? <sighs> Not so much don't like the Packers. It's just uh, – They're fans, you know, they're, isn't it? Go ahead and say and, it. Yeah, you, know, you know, they just – they disappoint me sometimes, and, and these are the games where they disappoint me. Um, you sure it's not because they kicked your ass in that Super Bowl? Well, you know, at least 10% of it's probably that. But. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going with Green Bay also. I think the Giants just have too many injuries with their defensive backs. I think Aaron Rodgers will have a field day. They'll win the game, something like 37-27. Um, last game of the week, Tampa Bay at Carolina, which who knows what's going to happen there. Tampa Bay, Carolina. Let's go since you were a former Buck. Are you still a homer, Coop? Well, you know, that's a <clears throat> that's going to be an interesting game. Um, you don't know if Cam's going to play or not. Um, Winston, you know, even though he's a crab and all, he plays pretty well. <laughs> well um, man, that's a tough one for me to pick. Um, but I'm going to, you know what, I'm just going to stick with Tampa Bay and say they'll pull one out. A little bit of an All upset right. for them. Matt? Uh, first of all, put me down for the Packers. Um, I think they'll be Oh, I didn't, I didn't ask you, did I? Sorry. It's all right. Um, Coop confused me with his disappearing phone. <laughs> uh, secondly, I think uh, when, when push comes to shove, especially with an extra day, I think Cam Newton will play and I think they'll win. I don't know if it'll be pretty, but I, I just think that Jameis Winston is turnover prone, and they've got uh, Doug Martin and Charles, Charles Sims are banged up. I'm um, not sure how, if they're going to score a lot of points. Caroline is desperate, too, so I, I think they'll find a way to win this game. Yeah, the 1.0 is this, Matt. Tampa Bay just put, or Atlanta just put 48 on them with some talented wide receivers. 
they lost Josh Norman. I mean, it seems like they're having a hard time defending the pass right now, and Tampa Bay does have some weapons at wide receiver. True, but I think uh, Matt Ryan is a better quarterback than Jameis Winston. I think they can get in, get, get to Jameis Winston. Yeah, I, I actually agree. I'm going with Carolina also just because Coop picked. I, I always pick against all Coop's teams. <laughs> the only problem is right, I like the Miami what, Hurricanes, guess what? which gives me a problem. But Guess what? Guess what? I'm changing my pick to the Carolina Panthers. Now what are you going to do? You can't change your pick once the pick is in. Is that not no, correct, No, I Aaron? can change my pick. Hey, it's, no, it's Aaron, strange. are you allowed to change your pick? Nope. Aaron said yeah, no. Aaron knows. I mean, I'm for oh. you changing your pick. Aaron, Aaron, you change yours on Facebook. Aaron says no. That's the rule. <laughs> that was before. Right. You can change – the rules are this. You can change your pick while we're picking that game. So, Coop – if you want to, you know, cower like a little girl and change your pick to Carolina, you're more than welcome. <laughs> All right, I'm cowering. I'm, I'm just gonna, I need I need every game I can get, so I'm 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 going back to Carolina. All right. So Matt convinced me. See. Aaron, you pick Carolina. Yes. Okay, Brian. I'm going to pick uh, Carolina as well. Uh, I think even if Cam Newton doesn't last, you know, I thought uh, you know Anderson played pretty well and. Uh, uh, I, I think Carolina will win this game. Well, you're a Steeler fan. We've seen Derek Anderson before. Derek Anderson can get the job done in small patches of the <laughs> season, I think. In small patches, exactly. Which in means he's patches. basically a really good backup quarterback. Yep. So, we, 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 Aaron touched on it a little bit, Odell Beckham Jr. What was your take on the way he acted last night, Matt? Do you think that's a problem? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Um, this has been kind of a pattern. It's just kind of started with Carolina last year uh, when him and Josh Norman just didn't even play football. They just attacked each other. And, you know, I think that takes away from your team. I think that is, that is a distraction. Um, that isn't to say that the Giants couldn't just, you know, and I think sometimes a veteran can – you know, speak up in the locker room and, you know, things can kind of simmer down and, they, you know, things get in the media and, you know, you don't like the, you know, the backlash. But I think it's potential that, that it can, you know, fix. I think Victor Cruz is a veteran that can, you know, maybe talk to him or something like that. But I, I do think it's a problem. And then for him to come out today and say he's not having fun, I mean, I, wide receivers just, they drive me crazy with this kind of stuff. He's... You just don't see this right. from any other position. So, Coop, have you ever been on a team with a guy like that that was the star who complained and cried all the time? Well, <clears throat> you know, no. You can just say yes and not Kind of yes to. and no, because you get guys – I mean, wide receivers – let's just talk about the position to start out with. Yeah. It's, it's the easiest position on the football team because you don't have to really know much. I mean, a route tree is not very difficult to learn, right? So you don't have to be the smartest guy – and the apple cart to start out with. Then you start running your mouth. I mean, he makes one great catch in his career, you know, maybe a few, but, um, you know, get the spotlight on him. Guess what? Step up and shut up, you know, and, and that's, all, that's all I got to say other than – and if I'm now if I'm his coach, I might say, hmm, okay, since you don't want to hand fight and get punched in the mouth and try and beat somebody off the line of scrimmage, maybe I'll put him in motion just to help him um, if that's his issue. You know, so as a coach, you got to say, how do I help this kid? Um, you know, as a former player, I go shut up and play. But, you know, see, I think you'll see a little combination of both of that this week. You know, the problem is when you're paying a guy that much money, do you want to have to put him in motion? Yeah. Yeah, I that's mean, what helps him get off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and but not I mean, really, somebody. Is, is he that good of a receiver then? That doesn't matter. You, you, you need to get the distraction off well, the line. Well, I know, line but, and, I mean, and, and the, the distraction so can kill a team, though. But I, yeah, and as a coach, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something to help that, and I'm going to do something. You know, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to try and help him too. So you think maybe they should do something like full metal jacket and just have a pillow party or a blanket party? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. You never seen full metal jacket, Coop? Yeah, but a pillow party. Well, you remember they took the soap, they put it in the pillows, and they beat him until he became tough. Oh, I got you. Yeah, you called, that was called the blanket technique back in the day. Yeah, whatever. I can't remember what 
it was called. The blanket <laughs> technique back in Schmitty's day was something totally different, wasn't it, Schmitty? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the family show, so we won't get into that. Um, Aaron, you got any comments on Odell Beckham? And just that, you know, Stefan Diggs went off, Marvin Jones went off. This could be a bounce back game for Odell, and then everybody else is, you know, real happy. Um, this could be the, just what the Giants need. I mean, the Packers have historically given up big games to the number one receiver from the opposing team. So that worries me if Sam Shields and Morgan Burnett don't play. But if they play, I think they'll uh, they'll have a lot better chance of shutting them down. Yeah, and the Packers have always had trouble with the Giants, it seems. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, um, any final words, Coop? Uh, yeah, Rams uh, – Probably could be the tightest game, even if stuck with the Rams. Um, Broncos, uh, again, as long as they don't turn over. Yeah. Atlanta's a good football team. I mean, they're a good football team. Yeah, they were a good football team last year. They started off 6-2 and two and then kind of petered out at the end. But I think the big thing about Atlanta is just with the new coach instead of the Mike Smith guy, they seem to be a lot tougher team. Yep. Yeah, so that. I think that's going to be a good game to watch because if, as long as, uh, you know, our defense plays well and we don't turn the ball over, I think we'll win. But, boy, you know, that, that could be one of those games where, you know, if things start off ugly early, it, it could get bad. But um, but that defense is, is playing so well right now, I'm pretty confident they'll, they'll win. All right, Brian, any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be another good week in the NFL. You know, obviously – I'm interested in a couple games. Uh, you know, the Char- Chargers Raider game. I think is going to be a great game. Uh, you know, I also think Atlanta and Denver is going to be another great game. Um, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see. Uh, you know, the Vikings. Uh, you know, what they do this week because uh, I think you know win this week and they make themselves even more for real than than anybody can imagine. So, uh, and also obviously uh, Steelers uh, get another win this week. Uh, the Extremely helpful for me. It uh, make me happy. So. Yeah, I'd rather they lose myself. Yeah, I, and I'm sure you would. I, as as I would like to see, you know, uh, the Bengals lose. And, uh, yeah, because, you know, you don't want it to come here and get beat again. Uh, you guys, I don't think you guys are going to be able to do that. So. Yeah, I know. We could never beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. But by then, Ben Roethlisberger will be hurt. So uh, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> If Vontez Perfect will just knock Le'Veon Bell out of the game like he has the last couple of years. Well, you know, dirty players can do that. Yeah, because that was a dirty play when he knocked him out. How <laughs> dare he tackle a running back at the knees? That's just wrong. Aaron, just... any final thoughts? Go, Go Packers. Go Packers. Just wanted to that's, see. Uh... That's not a thought. That's a statement. That's my first thing that comes to mind. Um, okay. Well, the, for, you could tell you're from Wisconsin. Except for Matt Andrews Cabbage is from Wisconsin. I guarantee you that's not what will come to his mind, Matt. Well, we touched <laughs> on this before. All, all Midwestern people are not smart. <laughs> well, I don't consider myself from the Midwest. I consider myself from the middle of America. Yeah, well. Are we on the- Luckily, Coop's phone cut out because I think he's going to say something mean to me. Matt, final thoughts. <laughs> I kind of like what uh, I said before. I think there's going to be uh, a lot of really good games this week. Uh, I'm really in- in- interested in the uh, the Falcons-Broncos game. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how, how the Broncos quarterbacks, whichever whoever plays, uh, handles Atlanta. Because like you said, I think, I think Atlanta is a lot tougher. Uh, their defense seems to be getting a little bit better. And uh, Matt Ryan's playing really well. So uh, I think that's a really good game. I think there's going to be a number of really good um, games around the league. Makes for another fun week. Yeah, and my final thought is I want to see Tom Brady against Cleveland. It may sound crazy, but the Browns can run the ball. Crowell's done great this year. Duke Johnson runs the ball pretty decent. But the thing I like, I like to watch Cleveland because of Terrell Pryor. I mean, yeah. that guy, for being a quarterback all Good. the way through college, I mean, he's a stud wide receiver already in the NFL. What did you guys think of the Duke Johnson play where he stands up after fumbling with the ball and the pile is still going and the, and the line judge just says Redskins ball? <laughs> well, 
I, uh, well, uh, it's the NFL. All the officials suck. All officials suck at every level of football, from Pee Wee all the way to the NFL. You agree, Coop? Uh, boy, I don't know. You know, I'm coaching some. <laughs> so actually your phone's breaking out and I can't hear you, so I'm just going to assume you agree. We'll with never me. know how much great thought and great material Coop brings to the show because of his I hands. know. You need to get a new <laughs> phone, Coop. Or move by, a, move by a cell tower or something. Leave them. Leave them. Because, you know, when you're picking Chicago and India, it comes in clear as hell. But when you're actually making a coherent statement, it just it, the phone cuts out. See what I mean? <laughs> Coop, you're a real estate agent. Find your house next to a cell phone tower. Uh, you know, I used to have full bars here, and I don't know what happened. Verizon sucks. It's working right now. Verizon's better than AT&T, though. So my final thought for the week is Verizon and Comcast suck. <laughs> Verizon and Comcast suck, especially Comcast. Because I'll tell you what. That should I be the name them. of the show. I called them at 11 o'clock, and they told me it's an outage in your area. It'll be back by 2.30. I called them at 2. They told me there's an outage in your area. It'll be back by 3.30. I called them at 4.30, and they told me, well, the outage was over at noon. You should have already had it back. And I said, I don't. And they said, well, we can send somebody out there Thursday. <laughs> and I said, I said you got to be out of your freaking mind. I said, I'd pay $250 a month for the phone, the Internet, the cable. You can't get somebody here sooner than that. And I bitched a little bit, and I talked about direct TV, and then all of a sudden they're like, well, we could probably get somebody out there before 7 at night. I said, all right. They said, I'll call you back in a half hour. An hour later, I called them again. And they said, oh, we don't know what happened. We'll have somebody out there. We'll give you a call back in a little bit. I never got a call back. So I called and raised all kind of hell for like an hour because sometimes I can be kind of abrasive until they came out yesterday at like 4 o'clock. Sometimes. A little abrasive? Yeah. Kinda. Yeah? Oh, you don't think I am? Well, that's all right. You can have that thought if you want, Aaron. I had it, too. And Schmitty knows that, I mean, no matter how bad stuff I talk to officials, I'm always nothing but respectful to them on the field. Yes. Yes, you are. See? Never said an ill, Ill word to an official. Um, <laughs> too bad none of us yeah, are officials. <laughs> all, 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 I, all I can say say is this. Um, part of the thing is you don't remember half the things you say, which is probably good. So. Oh, I know exactly what I'm saying. I just act like I didn't remember. But <laughs> it, the most penalties I've ever gotten in a game as a coach was four. I don't think that's too bad. <laughs> no, not at all. So, in other words, you were the sideline distraction. Yeah, I was just – just, <laughs> Get, they really get in a fight with a off, kicking net? They really pissed me off, though. Coop, what's the most penalties you ever got in the game? Oh. Coop played for the Buccaneers. That. That's like uh, a 60 two, minute penalty right there. Uh, it, Coop? <laughs> two, off, two offsides and one holding, and I thought I was going to get fired. Were you a Buccaneer then? No, I was a Bronco. Oh, yeah, you could have got fired for that there. In Tampa Bay, they just created Dan you out <clears throat> no, Tampa Bay was a nightmare with Ray Perkins. Yeah, that was a college coach that wasn't even that great of a college coach. No, he got fired at Alabama, fired everywhere he went. We we had the simplest offense. I mean, my, my high school offense was more complicated than the freaking Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense when I got there. I, I had the playbook. This is kind of a funny story. I'll be quick. And they hand me a, play, a book, and I think it's okay, it's game day. You know, it's a game day book. It's only about an inch thick. And when I left Denver, we had about an eight-inch playbook, right? And you'd take it down to a to a game plan. So I get handed what I think is a game plan on a Thursday when I get there in the middle of the season. So I'm looking through it going, wow, it's the same shit, different numbers, and just different some different calls, but I'm ready to play. He's like, so I, don't, I, I get there on Friday. I do walk through on Saturday. We play on Sunday. I don't dress on Monday. I'm in, in, in there. I'm in there for uh, to see the coach. I walk up to the offensive line coach. I go, "Hey, coach, you got the playbook?" And he looks at me in a horror, and he says, "You lost the playbook." And I go, "No, no, 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 no. I got it. I got it. I just 
for some reason I thought that was a game plan. I'm good, Coach. We're ready to go. I'll see you in the locker room. I was shocked. I was totally walked away in shock. My mouth dropped, and I went, holy shit, that is the playbook. I mean, I, I thought it was a game plan, and it was the whole playbook. It was that bad. I'm going to try to get Ray Perkins on the show to pick games with us next week. <laughs> he's got a metal plate in his head. What'd you say? Hey, I'll, I'll, he's got a metal plate in his head. So you're saying he's just as smart as us? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's a good candidate for the show. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Me and, me and Matt have metal plates. I'm pretty sure Aaron's got one or he's getting one. <laughs> Everyone hey, uh, in the Midwest has a metal plate. Hey, cool. Yeah, you have to have a metal plate. <laughs> we, we think we're oh. in the Midwest. Mike, you know why he's yeah. a great candidate for the show? His metal plate might give Coop's phone some reception. <laughs> that is a great point, Aaron. <laughs> oh, Aaron's a comedian now. Aaron made a funny, Mark. <laughs> She'd be out all night to think about it, being out in friggin' Wisconsin or wherever. <laughs> yeah, I've been to where he lives. Here. It's beautiful out there. Maybe or if he, hey, tell uh, <laughs> Barney I said hey. <laughs> That's in North Carolina, Coop. Who's the idiot now? Barney Five. Yeah, Barney Five. That was Mayberry. It was in North Carolina, wasn't it? Yeah. Even though so shut up. Well, it was Brian? Wasn't that North Carolina? I know. I know he's a big Andy Griffith fan. Yeah, I was in North Carolina. Maybe maybe in North Carolina. See, they all look alike. But I think this show's deteriorated <laughs> enough now to end it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you got on in store for the Forty ers Weekly Show this week, Matt? Other than just a lot of depressing news. Well, uh, Dexter and I are going to be on a uh, Bay Area podcast tomorrow on Niners Radio. Uh, we're going to be on with uh, former Niner and former Bear Tony Parrish. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a change-up, but it's going to be good. We'll have a good time. Um, it's, uh, it's not as much fun when you're losing, but uh, it'll still be a good time on the radio. All right, and on the other spectrum, Schmitty, you and Dwight Stone on the Pittsburgh Steelers show. What are you all talking? You got any guests or anything yet? Uh, not any guests yet, but uh, we will uh, break down the uh, raping of the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, and we will uh, talk about what it's going to take to uh, win to beat the Jets. You know, the fact that you just said that means that you'll never be able to run for president because if you try, MSNBC is going to run that constantly. <laughs> I'm sure they probably will. Um, also, make sure you check out the L.A. Rams weekly show with former Ram Tony Hunter. Uh, I believe Roman Gabriel will be a guest either this week or next week because last week he was supposed to be a guest, but I forgot to send Roman to call in information. But... It was legit. I didn't mean to, but it just happened. Um, Cincinnati Bengals weekly show will be myself, a former Bengal linebacker, Joe Kelly, and our special guest will be former Bengal defensive end, Jason Buck, from the Super Bowl Twenty Three team, which got screwed over by the officials. I don't know how, but they did. <laughs> it's funny you said that, we just game, talked about that screwed. yesterday. Matt, are you done laughing? See, he always picks on me about Super Bowl sixteen and twenty-three. Oh, I'm you know, I, yeah, that's all right. You can twist that if you want. That's all good. You know, I was saying we we're laughing because uh, you said there was no, there were no bad calls in that. Yeah, game. I know. That's what I just basically said there when I said that I don't remember <laughs> any, but I'm sure there was. <laughs> I didn't commit the game to memory. Uh, make sure you check out the CFL Canadian Football League weekly show with myself, Brian Oz Davis, and former CFL Hall of Fame quarterback, Los Angeles Rams quarterback Dieter Brock. Make sure you check that out also. Check out Out of Left Field for a baseball playoff preview coming up this week with Graham McCown and Chris Fury. So we're going to get off here. Make sure you check us out next week. Um, check out Gridiron Mode, www.gridironmode.com. So for Aaron Zepnik, Brian Schmidt, Matt Andrews Scavage, the immortal Mark Cooper, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak. Hey, Mike. Hello.